dead. <laughs> a second to see all this magnificence. <laughs> Let's get the obvious out the way right now. CeeLo had a yard sale and I racked the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Zorba, that's Z-O-R-B-A. Usually people here to go, damn, black folks just name their kids anything. Me and my cousin Coca-Cola used to get pissed about that. <laughs> Zima ain't called the house in the beach. It's a cool name. It beats a lot of names I heard as a kid. Went to school with a girl named Vanessa. Normal name? She spells it with a Q. Tell me that's exotic. I'm like, no, bitch, that's retarded. <laughs> yes, man. Certain names. Certain names you hear. Like, you'll never see a Hillary in the projects, will you? If you do something went horribly wrong. <laughs> Certain names. I got two cousins, one named Shortcake and the other named Pumpkin. And you wonder why diabetes runs in our family. <laughs> That's the reason right there. I come from Kentucky. Yeah, they got black people there. <laughs> Hillbillies, rednecks, and me. This is what they look like when they don't even breathe. <laughs> Take a good look. As a stereotype we marry our cousins, that's not true. I've been dating my aunt for a while. I, think that's true. I come from a place where the pigeons chew tobacco. You understand what I'm saying? They put like gun racks on bicycles. That's to give you an idea. Yeah, man. Last time I went home to visit my mom, like a year ago, I was crossing the street and a redneck almost ran me over. He's on nothing. He's in his pickup truck. He's going to holler his window. He goes, hey, nigger. Then he ran into a tree. <laughs> Coincidence, it was a black oak. <laughs> yes, indeed. Country, country, country. Got a crazy family. Got an uncle named Tom, but we can't call him that. <laughs> <laughs> my dad walked out on me and my mom in 1979, went to get a pack of cigarettes and never returned. That's <laughs> fucked up, but it kept me from smoking. <laughs> Considering how the founding fathers of this country used to dress, I don't think they would have a problem with transgender soldiers in the military. <laughs> just, I mean, just a thought. If RuPaul want to fight, fuck him, go. You ain't getting me to fight. I can guarantee you that. I don't, no, 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 no. I dress up, as you can see, I got style. You like my shoes, ladies? Yeah. I wear these type of shoes because they make women moist. <laughs> no, but I get, like, I'm walking down the street and this lady sees me. She goes, I want you to be my sugar daddy. So sugar daddy, baby, I got diabetes. <laughs> How about your gluten-free uncle? <laughs> your keto cousin? Stereotypes. I get a, all kind of stereotypes when they see me. Like I don't know why. When, if you would dress like me, it's cool. For some reason, when I dress like this, it's a it's a no. I don't know. This is my Thanksgiving Christmas outfit. That orange. That orange. You're at least washing between the holidays. Okay. <laughs> Let me handle this. There's a reason you're sitting in the dark. Yeah, man. You know, I had a lot of jobs before I got into comedy. I used to work at a grocery store. One time I was upstairs cleaning up in the monitor but the whole store was on. I saw this lady in the, in the, like, in the aisle with all the sweets. I couldn't resist. I got on intercom. I was like, fat chicken out six, put those ho hoes down. Fat chicken out six, put those ho hoes down. My boss thought it was funny. Too bad his wife can't take a joke. <laughs> Had to let me go. I used to work at an international hospital. The funny thing about that, I was the only American, but I was representing all of us. And people would ask me the craziest thing. They'd be like, so are you from Africa? And I'd be like, technically, yeah, but I ain't been home in over 500 years. <laughs> Why do you refer to yourself as African-American? What does it mean? I'm an American whose ancestors come from Africa. No big deal. Me and this white guy got an argument about that. He goes, how do you know? You don't have any proof. <laughs> What tribe I'm from, the chances are with this skin complexion, this features, and this hair, I can pretty much scratch out polling. 
<laughs> Jeremy. Any English people in here? I'm gonna talk about them fucks. <laughs> what we refer to as a sidewalk, they call it pavement. What we call a sweater, they call it jumper. Man, this Englishman got an argument about that. He goes, that's the problem with you black Americans. You can't speak proper English. I said, well, had you left me in Africa, we wouldn't have this issue with that woman. <laughs> Shit. Thank God for Uber and Lyft. Because of them, Yellow Cab is picking me up like crazy now. I walk down the street and yawn, three of them stop. Thanks, God. I live here in the Tenderloin. Crazy, yeah. crazy, yeah, it's crazy. The beauty about living here in the Tenderloin, you see the craziest stuff. It's the only place I've been where you'll see an empty wheelchair and not be concerned about where's the person that was in it. <laughs> I seen a guy, I walked past him, he's trying off, he's about to shoot up. As I walked past him, I overheard him say, I don't drink soda because soda's bad for my health. <laughs> That's the Tenderloin. I seen a guy with weak chin, lazy eye, butt teeth, he had a sign on his a shirt on that said, I make pretty babies. That's the tenderloin. You ever seen a homeless racist? Come over here. I had a homeless guy call me the nigga. He called me the nigga. He called me the nigga. Then three, 30 minutes later, asked me for change. I'm like, change? You just called me a nigga. Why you gotta bring up old shit? Tenderloin. You ever seen a vegan crackhead? Tenderloin. There's a little prostitute, she's this little, she's a little bit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Her name is Half Price. I can't make that up. That's the tenderloin. Exactly. Um, you ever had somebody try to say you meet out a baby stroller? What? Tenderloin. Come out here, right here, out here, in front of this place, it's crazy. I call it the homeless flea market. Why? Because homeless people find stuff, they set it up, and they try to sell it to you. The other day I'm walking down the street, over here a homeless guy tried to sell me one shoe. <laughs> what the hell am I going to do with one shoe? He said, take it one step at a time. <laughs> yeah. Living here in San Francisco, I, I see a lot of things that like so crazy. Like, since I moved here, this, like certain things like, you can't freak people out sexually here. You can. You can say I fuck horses. They'll be like, well, was it a Palomino? Because I fuck with Clydesdales myself. Man. My sister like Abyssinians. I should tell you I'm from Kentucky. How many brothers are just going to pop off horses like that? It's like that. Yeah, he knows his horses. Yes, I know my horses. I broke up with my girlfriend recently. I'm not dating again. I went out with this girl the other night. She said, don't treat me like a date. Treat me like you would treat your mom. So I ain't gonna call her for six months. Relationships. <laughs> I learned one thing, fellas. Y'all gotta stop doing this. Uh, stop using corny pickup lines to meet women. <laughs> women, aren't you tired of that shit? Yes. You want a man to be himself, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. I see a guy one time at this club. He was trying to talk to this girl. He goes up to her. He goes, excuse me, sweetheart. Is your father a thief? <laughs> then how did he steal the stars out of the sky and put them in your eyes? See, you can never say that to a black woman. You'll get backlash. Is your father a thief? Is your mother a hoe? <laughs> <laughs> Buy me a drink, bitch. <laughs> but I tried that when I was in my 20s, and you know, I saw this girl, she was thick as an in and out milkshake. You understand what I'm saying? She had more curves than Lombard Street. I went up to her, I stuck up a basic conversation. I was like, hey, how you doing? Where you from? Can we fuck? You know, basic conversation. Her boyfriend comes back from the bathroom. You see how big I am? Ain't nothing about me. He says, lightweight. He made me look like mini me. He picks me up off the stool. What the fuck you doing, huh? That old woman. I start thinking to myself, what would Popeye do in this situation? Now what would Popeye do? Eat a can of spinach and whoop ass, am I correct? I didn't have a can of spinach, however. <laughs> but I did have a pack of Mentos. You saw them commercial, if you eat a Mentos, you could accomplish the world. I had two of them. Gave them a left cross. As the paramedics rushed me to the hospital, <laughs> with a pack of Mentos up my ass. I was just glad it wasn't a can of spinach. So we're doing this. I 
saw this in the paper recently. They found the original bus that Rosa Parks was on. And I think that's so cool, but here's the question I ask. How they put it in the front of the vehicle? I messed up the joke. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't matter, I'm getting old. I messed up the joke. Um, I'll leave you folks, thanks you, good night. <laughs> We're